Hi there, Mrs. G here. Today I'm an assemblage artist. I'm going to create a Louise Nevelson box. And what Louise Nevelson did is that she would have wooden boxes. I have a shoe box. And she would find objects and affix them to the box. I'm going to use hot glue to create her box sculptures. So let's see the items that I have. I have a can, a round lid, several smaller lids that I pulled out of my recycling can, an old CD I will no longer be using, a box, I really like the square shape of this half of a box, three wires that I've zigzagged and curled and looped, a plastic fork, a rubber band, Love the texture of bubble wrap. Size eight, that's what size shoe I am because I pulled that off my shoe box. We don't need that. And some beads. Now it doesn't matter what color anything is. So I don't have to take labels off of anything because once I assemble my box sculpture, I'm going to spray paint it all a uniform color. And the really cool thing about Louise Nevelson's work is that she would create lots of boxes like this, stack them all together, and paint them all a uniform color so that each object would lose its individual characteristics. Like you wouldn't know that this is a can of coconut milk anymore, but you would recognize it um, for its cylindrical shape instead. So let's begin. I am going to glue my bubble wrap into the back of my jewelry box. Some piece of jewelry came in that. Okay. Then I'm going to affix this to the base of my shoe box, just like that. Okay. Hmm. You have to think about what is the most interesting visually. So would the CD look more interesting like this? or like this. Well, it just depends on your personal taste. I want it to look like this, and I kind of want to float it halfway between the opening of the box and the base of the box. So, I'm going to actually glue it to the back of my jewelry box. So it can sort of float right there in the middle of the box. Also creates an interesting shadow behind it. Cool. Can't forget about my can. I don't know where to put that yet. I made holes in my box for my wire. So let's put that in. Since I found all of these items in my home, you can definitely do the same thing. You can use any kind of box, it doesn't have to be a shoe box. And if you really like this activity, you can create multiple boxes, paint them all the same color, and glue them together just like Louise Nevelson does. Okay. Neat. Oh, that looks really cool. Now, this is large, so I need to plan for 
its placement. Also, do I want it to look like this or like this? Hmm. Or like this. I almost want it behind. Yeah, that looks cool. I will glue it behind my wire that I just put in. I'm rolling it onto its gluey side. Cool thing about hot glue is it dries almost instantly. You don't have to clamp anything or hold anything for too long. Cool. I have another circle shape. It kind of echoes the shape of my circular CD. I think I want to put it on the roof of my box. There we go. And I'm going to make some concentric circles, which means circles within circles, by putting a lid inside a lid, and then put another lid on top of that. So we have three concentric circles going on right here. Neato. I have a fork. Ooh. I like placing the fork like this because we have lots of verticals right here so we can have a horizontal. I wonder if I can balance this on the edge of my jewelry box. Oh, let's see. That one I might have to hold in place. But I think it'll work. I love how it appears to be free floating in front of the jewelry box. I think that'll have a neat effect if I can get it to stay. Hmm. I'm gonna weigh it down a little bit. Maybe. It's all about experimentation. No? Oh, here. I'll put this behind it while it dries. Ah, there we go. I have a straw. I love the bend in the bendy straw. I'm gonna take advantage of that by putting it, we don't have anything really in the foreground. Ooh, look at that. That looks cool in the corner. I'm gonna do that. sort of frames the lower left-hand corner of our box. What do we have left to work with? Some beads for texture, a rubber band. I like how that can be any shape that you mold it in. And then the lid that's using, that the fork is using right now. Where shall we put our rubber band? I kind of want to dangle it from the ceiling of the box. Or maybe I'll put some beads on it. Give it some weight. Some visual and actual texture as well. And if you get strings from your hot glue gun, just pull those off. I call them spider webs. I like that up here. Almost looks cooler like that. I think I'll do that. Okay, I'll put a bead in the middle. Oh, 
I just have a few more beads to mess with. I think it might be funny to put one on the fork. I could put a bunch on the fork, like peas almost. Can move our support, hopefully. That's dry. I don't want to glue our peas to our support. Oh yes, this is supposed to be abstract. No peas, they're just circles. Well. In my mind, they look like peas. So there. I'm just going to put a little random pile as if the person is scooping up some something with the fork. Okay. One more. I tend to like threes. A lot of artists like to do things in threes. It has nice balance to it. You'll see I put three beads on the dangling rubber band and I put three beads on this handle of the fork. Oh, one more lid. Ooh, that is quite crazy. I'll put this lid on the floor base of our box. Right there. Okay, the next step is to spray paint the entire sculpture one color and do so carefully that you can that you um, are not able to see any of the original coloring of any of the objects in your sculpture. So as you can see, I've spray painted the entire sculpture red. See how you can't really tell what anything was in its quote previous life, but now it's unified through the color red, and I think that Louise Nevelson would make about 50 more <laughs> and glue them all together uh, to create a large-scale sculpture out of boxes. <laughs>